This is Turner Sports. to the 2018 NCAA Selection Show. I'm Greg Gumbel. We have moved ourselves down to Atlanta, Georgia, and to TBS because this is just a beautiful place to be, especially this time of year. Lots to get through over the next two hours. To help me along the way, my co-host, you know him as Ernie Johnson, EJ. Thank you, Greg, 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 from this canyon-like studio, and we're doing things a little bit differently this year, folks. Uh, got the new studio, got a studio audience, about 200 strong, and they're very enthusiastic. <laughs> And all, and all that tells you is that, is that they can read the applause sign behind me. Uh, this year, you'll know all 68 teams in the field in the first 10 minutes, beginning with the automatic qualifiers, followed by the 36 at-large teams. So let's get started. The 32 automatic qualifiers. Greg, take it away. All right, here we go. In alphabetical order, we will reveal the teams who have qualified for the tournament. And let's take a look and start with... Arizona's Wildcats, the Wildcats, winners of the Pac-12 championship. Then there is Bucknell, Bucknell out of the Patriot League, regular season and tournament champions. The Bulls of Buffalo from the Mid-American Conference. And then from the Big West Conference, Cal State Fullerton's Titans, continuing down the line. From the Colonial Athletic Association, the College of Charleston with a 26 and seven record. From the American Athletic Conference, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. From the Atlantic 10, Davidson's Wildcats. They're here with a 21 and 11 record. And then the Sun Belt, the winner of the NCAA or the, uh, the Sun Belt Championship, the Panthers of Georgia State. <laughs> Continuing from the West Coast Conference, Gonzaga's Bulldogs, no strangers to the postseason tournament. The Metro Atlantic Conference champions, the Gales of Iona, check in with a 20 and 13 record. The Kansas Jayhawks. How many times have you heard the Kansas Jayhawks are in the NCAA tournament out of the Big 12? And from the Southeastern Conference, the Kentucky Wildcats. From the Atlantic Sun, here's something you've never heard before. Lipscomb is in the NCAA tournament for the first time ever. And are the people in Lipscomb happy? Yeah, they appear to be. Something special about a first time ever. Congrats to the Bisons of Lipscomb. From the Northeast, the LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds are in the tournament. Out of the Missouri Valley Conference, the Loyola Ramblers, Loyola of Chicago. Been a long time since they've been around. And out of Conference USA, Marshall's Thundering Herd. And that rounds out the top half of the AQs. Ernie? So there were 32 of those, and you've done 16, so let me do the math. How many do I have left? 16 teams. Thank you very much. That's why we have the live studio audience. Uh, the Michigan Wolverines, an impressive run to the Big Ten Championship. They are in. How about the Montana Grizzlies, their first NCAA tournament since 2013 out of the Big Sky? The Murray State Racers out of the Ohio Valley. Uh, their first time since 2012 after winning the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament, beating Belmont by 17. How about the North Carolina Central Eagles out of the MEAC and their head coach, Lavelle Moten, the greatest nickname ever, Poetry in Moten, and Central is in. New Mexico State's Aggies. How about a first year for Chris Jans as the head coach and the program record, 28 wins. They go 28 and 5. You talk about a heart-stopping tournament championship game today in the Ivy League. How about Penn knocking off Harvard? Coach Steve Donahue has the Quakers in there for the first time since 2007. The Radford Highlanders. Let's hear it for the Radford Highlanders. And let's see the Radford Highlanders. 
their third tournament appearance and their first since 2009. Looking for that first win, they are 0 and 2. And the San Diego State Aztecs, their first NCAA tournament since 20 and 15. And they beat Nevada, and they were just getting warm as they beat New Mexico for the championship. So San Diego State is in. Stephen F. Austin, the Lumberjacks of the Southland Conference, their fifth NCAA tournament appearance in school history, the third in the last four years for the Lumberjacks. So you got Lumberjacks and you got Jackrabbits of South Dakota State out of the Summit League. Three straight tournament appearances, and you'll get a good look at Mike Daum, the dominator for South Dakota State. Texas Southern out of the Southwestern Athletic. They started the season 0-13, but Mike Davis's guys are in the big dance. How about the UMBC Retrievers? The University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Let's hear it for them. They knocked off the top seed, Vermont, on the road to make their first appearance since 2008. Wait till you see Jarius Lyles and KJ Mora. That team is fun to watch. UNC Greensboro Spartans out of the Southern uh, and a huge uh, Atlanta following, apparently, uh, for Coach Wes Miller. Their first NCAA tournament appearance since 2001. Any Villanova fans in the house out of the Big East? They're 30 and four. Coach Jay Wright, four straight 30 win seasons for the Wildcats. They won the conference tournament in overtime. Virginia, 31 and two. And this is a team that was not ranked at the beginning of the season, and they are the number one seed. And Wright State rounds it out out of the Horizon League for head coach Scott Nagy, their first time since 2007, led by Grant Benzinger. And it tells you how old I am because I remember watching Todd Benzinger, his dad, play for the Cincinnati Reds way back when. So there you have it, almost half the field now. 30 large teams are next, Greg. You got the first six. And this is where the good stuff comes in because now teams and schools are sitting out there wondering where do they fit or if they fit into the equation alphabetically. Let's start with the Crimson Tide of Alabama. <laughs> Coach Avery Johnson gets the tide back into the tournament for the first time since 2012. Out of the Pac-12, the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Started the year going 12 and 0, finished with a mark of 20 and 11. From the Southeastern Conference, the Razorbacks of Arkansas, Coach Mike Anderson, one of four coaches with 15 or more years of experience and no losing seasons. From Auburn University, the Tigers are in the tournament. Mike Pearl's team returns to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 03, and somewhere Charles Barkley is smiling. In the Big East, the Butler Bulldogs, a fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. The Bulldogs come in at 20 and 13 on the year. From the ACC, the Clemson Tigers. Their first appearance since 2011. The Tigers won a school record 11 conference games. Ernie. All right, thank you very much, Greg. Let's move on for uh, another six on this side of the stage and start with the Blue Jays of Creighton out of the Big East for Coach Greg McDermott. They beat Villanova when they were ranked number three this year, the highest ranked opponent Creighton has ever beaten. Hey, look who made the field. Duke out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. 34th tournament appearance for Coach K. The Florida Gators out of the SEC, 20 and 12. A very popular choice here in our Atlanta studio. The Seminoles of Florida State out of the ACC had six quadrant one wins. That was a big factor for the committee this year. Houston Cougars out of the American Athletic are an at-large team. They had a tough game today against Cincinnati, and it's a photo opportunity for the Cougars, making their first appearance since 2010. Kelvin Sampson has taken four programs now to the big dance. Kansas State Wildcats make it consecutive NCAA tournament appearances under Bruce Weber, Dean Wade, and Barry Brown. Check them out. They're the guys who carry the cats as we get you back to Greg. Greg. In mind, these are alphabetical listings. So if we're at the M's, you'll notice Louisville is not included. So the Cardinals are not in the NCAA tournament the year. The Miami Hurricanes, however, are. Out of the ACC, Coach Jim Laranega's team, a third straight. And they finished the season at 22 and 9. 
the Spartans of Michigan State. Coached by Tom Izzo, it's 21 straight tournament appearances. For Tom Izzo, they win the Big Ten regular season title. Moving on out of the Southeastern Conference, the Tigers of Missouri at 20 and 12. 12 wins better than they were a season ago. Moving on from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. They return to the tournament after a two-year absence and 21 and 11 on the season. The Wolfpack of Nevada. A lot of Wolfpacks around these days. Be careful out and about. Mountain West team coached by Eric Musselman, the Mountain West Coach of the Year, and the Tar Heels of North Carolina from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Roy Williams looking to become the 11th coach in NCAA history to appear in three straight Final Fours. Ernie. Thank you, Greg. And because we are going alphabetically, Notre Dame next or not? The answer is not. We are going to the O's. As Notre Dame does not make it, Ohio State does out of the Big Ten. Chris Holtman, a great first year. Buckeyes are loving it. After a two-year absence, they're back in the dance. Would Oklahoma make it? Yes, they will. Out of the Big 12, 18 and 13, they do boast the great freshman Trey Young. They stumbled down the stretch, but the Sooners do get in with an at-large berth. From the Big East, the Friars of Providence and head coach Ed Cooley reaching the Big East Tournament Championship game where they fell and where he split his pants and covered himself up with a towel. Hopefully that will not happen in the tournament. Uh, the Big Ten uh, Purdue Boilermakers of Coach Matt Painter. Fourth straight NCAA tournament appearance. Watch out for Carson Edwards. He can really do it. The Rhode Island Rams out of the Atlantic 10 are in there under head coach Danny Hurley. He was the A-10 coach of the year. They lost to Davidson today, which kind of uh, messed things up for some teams on the bubble. We'll get into that later. Seton Hall Pirates are also in there out of the Big East. Their third straight 20-win season under head coach Kevin Willard. So Seton Hall is in. Back to you, Greg. All right, Ernie, home stretch time now. Which teams are in? Which teams are not on the board? We'll tell you who is Atlantic 10's Bonnies of St. Bonaventures. The Bonnies 25 and 7 on the year. They're there, and so are the Syracuse Orange out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Jim Beheim, his 33rd NCAA tournament appearance. Out of the Big 12, the Horn Frogs of TCU check in with a 21 and 11 mark. The Tennessee Volunteers, a terrific season. Out of the SEC, they come back to the NCAA tournament first time since 2014. Out of the Big 12, the Texas Longhorns are there. Second NCAA tournament as the Longhorns head coach for Coach Shaka Smart. And out of the Southeastern Conference, the Aggies of Texas A&M. They open the season 11-1. and one. The 9-4 and four finish the regular season, propel them to the NCAA tournament. And with that, those are your at-large bids from over here. And I'll take the last group over here, Greg, and we'll stay in the Lone Star State with the uh, Red Raiders of Texas Tech out of the Big 12. Their most wins since 1996 as they go 24 and 9 under Chris Beard. The Bruins of UCLA out of the Pac-12 and head coach Steve Alford, led by Aaron Holiday, the Pac-12's leading scorer. Out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Virginia Tech Hokies. There is uh, Buzz's bunch. Back-to-back -back appearances for the first time since 85-86. Out of the Big 12, watch this team, the West Virginia Mountaineers of head coach Bob Huggins. West Virginia lost in the Big 12 tournament title game to Kansas, but gave Virginia one of its two losses this year. Out of the American Athletic, Wichita State under head coach Greg Marshall. 25 win season for the ninth straight time. Only Duke, Kansas, and Gonzaga can share that claim. And here's our last team, the Musketeers of Xavier out of the Big East. Uh, its first number one seed in school history for that team, led by Trayvon Blewett. And Greg, I'm looking at my watch. I said we'd have the entire field in the first 10 minutes. It's more like 13 minutes. 
My bad. Never okay. been a man of your word, have you? There you go. Take it. All right. <laughs> now you know all 68 teams. Question now, who's playing whom and who are the last four in and the first four out? First, here are the bids by conference, and the ACC leads the way with nine teams. The SEC right behind them with eight. The Big 12 has seven teams, and the Big East with six teams. Coming up next on the NCAA Selection Show, lots of anxious coaches, players, and fans waiting to see where they're headed. We'll break it all down next on the Selection Show here on TBS. Yeah. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by AT&T. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And by Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. cheer for yourselves you're in the big dance welcome back to the 2018 ncaa selection show here on tbs and these are the last four teams in ucla st bonaventure arizona state and syracuse and the first four out baylor notre dame st mary's and the university of southern california we'll have much more to talk about that later we remind you the tournament gets underway with the first four on tuesday and wednesday in dayton ohio here are those games, all televised on True TV. LIU Brooklyn against Radford, St. Bonaventure, UCLA, NC Central and Texas Southern and Arizona State against Syracuse. Finally, here are the top four seeds of the tournament. The overall number one seed is Virginia in the South region. Villanova is the top seed in the East. It's Kansas in the Midwest. And Xavier is the top seed out West. Those are your four top seeds. Time now for the matchups. Ernie and Clark have the first bracket, yeah? All right, thank you very much, Greg. A hand, please, for uh, the legendary Clark Kellogg. The first tournament bracket from the NCAA and its corporate champion, AT&T, and the guy from the Ohio State yes. University. Always great to be great to be with you. Great to be here with you, and great to see the Buckeyes in the bracket. <laughs> yes. And the, in the South region, the the number one overall seed is Virginia, taking on UMBC. That's Friday in Charlotte. Let's move on and see Creighton, the number eight seed, playing Friday against the number nine seed, Kansas State. That's always a toss-up game. Always a toss-up. That 8-9, Virginia, as dominant as any team in the country this year, deserving of that number one. On we move to Thursday in Boise. That's where you'll find the Kentucky Wildcats with a number five seed taking on a Davidson. There are Wildcats there. And we know the Davidson Wildcats have been giant killers in the past, although this Kentucky team really rounding in the form, that young group. Also on Thursday in Boise, Arizona on the four line. They are 27-7 and seven with DeAndre Ayton, one of the great players in America, taking on the Buffalo Bills, who won the MAC at 26 and 8. Let's move on in the South region. And the rest of the action in the first and second rounds. Thursday in Dallas, that's where you find the Hurricanes of Miami taking on Loyola Chicago, 28 and 5. Ernie, if you're looking for a double-digit seed out there, folks, to lock into, the Ramblers are one to take a look at. There's a very good shooting team, balance going as well. Yeah, I saw a lot of people taking notes when you said that. Also <laughs> Thursday in Dallas, the Tennessee Volunteers at 25 and 8 made it to the SEC championship game. They will take on Wright State. 25 and 9, Wright State, the number 14 seed in the South region. And they know now that they will get the Tennessee Volunteers in round one. 
<laughs> and a delayed reaction. Uh, Nevada is the number seven seed playing Friday in Nashville against Shaka Smart's Texas Longhorns. Some folks had Texas on the bubble, but obviously comfortably in. Great job by the Longhorns and Shaka Smart. And rounding it out in the south, Cincinnati. How deep a run will the Bearcats make? They are 30 and four, and they get Georgia State. The number 15 seed, Ron Hunter, is back in the tournament. He won't have to use that little scooter anymore. <laughs> One of the uh, outstanding coaches and personalities that we've had in the field. Let's take a look and widen this out. Big picture in the South region. And you had to tell me how the road looks, like for the top seed, Virginia. Well, Virginia's been dominant defensively, and I think this is the best offensive unit Tony Bennett has had. They very well could get all the way to San Antonio, but I love what Arizona has shown of late. That's the team that I've got my eye on to perhaps get out of that region. How about that Kentucky-Arizona would be right seats. there. Wow, and Cincinnati, keep an eye on the Bearcats as well. All right, Greg, what you got? All right, EJ. Thank you you and thank everybody else the next bracket from the NCAA and its corporate champion Capital One Seth Davis to my right a basketball junkie <laughs> to his heart to the core let's take a look at the East region these are first and second round games to be played Thursday and Saturday in Pittsburgh and right at the top the top seed the Villanova Wildcats their second straight number one seed Wildcats coming fresh off of the Big East tournament in which they the suspense is killing them. I know, it is. It is. Are we there? Are we Get there? Up, guys. They're there. They'll take on the winner of the first round game between LIU, Brooklyn, and Radford. Moving on, the number eight seed in the East is Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech taking on Alabama, coached by Avery. Ooh, that's a fun game. First one to 100 wins, two up-tempo teams. The difference, Alabama has Colin Sexton. Tech does not Bama wins. All right, now, games from San Diego. West Virginia, the number five seed in the East at 24 and 10, taking on Murray State Racers. Check in at 26 and 5 on the year. And the Shockers of Wichita State at 25 and 7. They're the number four seed in the East set, and they will take on 13th seed Marshalls. Last first. year, last year, Greg, Wichita State wins the Missouri Valley. They got a 10th seed. Everybody was mad. They moved to the American, finished in second place. Now they get a four seed. That's why they made the move, and it paid off. All right, let's move on down the bracket now. First and second round games to be played in Dallas, Texas. Number six seed, Florida Gators at 20 and 12, and they will take on the winner of the St. Bonaventure UCLA matchup. And you say. And, and I say right now that the winner of that Bonaventure UCLA matchup will beat Florida. Florida has good guards. Bonaventure and UCLA both have better guards, and Florida's certainly uh, a little bit weak down low. So one of those teams are going to move on. Okay, the number three seed in the East. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech out of the Big 12, and they will take on Stephen F. Austin. In Dallas, Texas, how about that game? Texas Tech may be a little bit under -seated. Their best player, Keenan Evans, missed some games. They lost four in a row. They may have won the Big 12 if that hadn't happened. All right, let's move on to Friday-Sunday games taking place in Detroit. Arkansas's Razorbacks are there, the number seven seed, and they will meet the Butler Bulldogs, who are checking in at 20 and 13 on the year. And then rounding out the East region play, the number two seed in the East, the Purdue Boilermakers and they will meet Cal State Fullerton so let's take a look at the entire bracket now and as we do that Seth uh, where do you see your upset specials happening other than what you just talked about well, first of all, I think this bracket sets up great for Villanova, obviously coming through Boston. Uh, I think that Purdue-Arkansas game is going to be very challenging for the Boilermakers. The, uh, the Razorback, very athletic. They have a freshman center. Everybody remember this name, Daniel Gafford. I think he can guard Isaac Haas. I like Arkansas to go to the Sweet 16. I talked about Texas Tech, Greg. The issue that they had with an injury late, which deflated their record and their seed, I think they will go to the Elite Eight, where they will lose to Villanova, and the Wildcats are going to San Antonio. Don't hold back. Just be bold. That's uh, hard for me to be opinionated. But All right, Seth, when we come back, the rest of the brackets don't go anywhere. TBS 
for the 2018 NCAA Selection Show. It is time for more matchups with, uh, look who's here, Charles Barkley. Here is the tournament bracket from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Coca-Cola. We'll start with first and second round games on Thursday and Saturday in Wichita, Kansas. The Kansas Jayhawks. How often have you seen them at a number one seed? It's the 14th time they've been a number one seed, and they will take on, in Wichita, the smart Penn, kids. The Quakers. Bill Self, what, what Bill Self has accomplished is amazing. These, all these years winning that conference, amazing. Meanwhile, the Quakers, they appear to be ready to face the Kansas Jayhawks. <laughs> all right, moving on. Seton Hall will be out in Wichita, the number eight seed in the Midwest. They will take on North Carolina State, the Wolfpack, 21 and 11 on the year. To first and second round games now on Friday and Sunday out in San Diego, California, and the Clemson Tigers will be there, the number five seed. They'll take on New Mexico State, 28 wins on the year. I got a chance to watch them play last night against an old teammate, Dan Marley. They're better than people think they are. And the other game in this part of the bracket. They're definitely not as Who good as that? we think. We're, we're amazing. Congratulations to Bryce Brown and all those guys, Jared, Jared Harper, Mustafa Heron. Proud of my kids. War Eagle, really proud of those kids. Had themselves a pretty good year, 25 and 7, and they will meet the Cougars of the College of Charleston who are 26 and 7. So that's the top half of the Midwest. Let's go to first and second round Friday, Sunday games to be played in Detroit, the number six seed, the Horn Frogs of TCU and Texas Christian will play the winner of the matchup between Arizona State and Syracuse. Well, very surprised both of those teams got in actually, but Jamie Dixon went home and he's done a fantastic job there. All right, Michigan State. Michigan State, the number three seed in the Midwest. Tom Izzo's team, 29 and four, no strangers to the tournament, and they'll take on Bucknell. Bucknell at 25 and nine. Michigan State was my preseason number one. That's a very dangerous team right there. All right, moving on now to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's where first and second round games will be played on Thursday and Saturday. The Rams of Rhode Island will take on Oklahoma. Listen, Trey Young, first player to ever lead college basketball in scoring and assists. I did not think they deserved to be in the tournament, and they're going to lose to Rhode Island. All right, meanwhile, here's Duke, the Duke Blue Devils, at 26-7 and seven on the year. Mike Krzyzewski with his 34th NCAA tournament appearance. They'll take on Iona, the Gales, at 20 and 13 out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. So we take a look overall now at the Midwest Regional. You like Kansas coming out of there? No, you like Duke coming out of there. I actually like Michigan yeah, State. You like Auburn coming uh, out of there. Listen, I'm going to pull for my Auburn Tigers, but I like Michigan State in that region. But let me tell you something. Clemson against uh, New Mexico State is a fabulous game. I'm going with the upset. I'm taking New Mexico State. But listen, down here, I'm telling you, Rhode Island and Duke is going to be a fantastic game. All right, Chuck. Ernie. <laughs> All right, thank you. Charles loves each and every facet of that bracket. Uh, the final region of the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champions. More sponsors than this guy, Kenny the Jet Smith. Please give it up for the Jet. In the West region, the number one seed, and this is their first number one seed in school history. The Musketeers of Xavier, and they will take on the winner of NC Central and Texas Southern, one of those first four games. Missouri is the number eight seed, and there's a question on exactly how the uh, how the Tigers are going to be faring with one of their stars. Yeah, Porter's going to help or hinder. You know, obviously a great player, but hasn't been in the continuity, Ernie, so we'll see if he's able to pick it up over this week, getting ready for the NCAA. They'll take on the Seminoles of Florida State, the number nine seed. Ohio State is a number five seed at 24 and 8, and they will take on South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, who have become shock a, people a all the fixture time. in the NCAA. Oh, but they tournament. shock people all the time. Ohio State better be ready. Uh, Gonzaga, once again in the tournament, 30 and 4 for Mark Few, lost the title game a year ago, and they open up with UNC Greensboro. West Miller, shout out. He's a tall hill, too. Yeah, West Miller, the head coach, in their first appearance since 2001, yeah. and they, they get the Zags in their opener. Yes. Yeah. Let's go 
going to be a tough one, but it's going to be fun to be there. First and second round action Thursday and Saturday in Wichita, Kansas, and Houston. The number six seed is Sleeper. Kelvin yeah, Kelvin Sampson does it oh, again. They, they got sleepers. San Diego State. Yes, they're a sleeper team. They did not lose a game at home, which is actually playing at TSU. Didn't play at Houston, but they are a great team, Houston Cougars. How about the run Michigan made to the Big Ten Championship, and they're going to get Montana, number 14 seed in the first round. Yeah, Michigan Michigan is a sleeper team in terms of people kind of forgot about them a little bit, and now they're getting their roll back. They won the Big Ten Tournament for a second straight year. Great numbers on scoring defense. Look at them. They're, they're, oh, there it is. There's the one excitement. nine straight. There's a little bit of a satellite delay. Yeah, that's all right, though. That's, they're, not, they're not that chill at this point. Okay. Uh, uh, the number seven C playing Friday in Charlotte, Texas A&M at 20 and 10, uh, 12. Taking on Providence, watch out Ooh, for Fryer. My guy Cooley's got them going. He really understands the pace of the game. He's always had great guard play over the years, and no, and no different this year. And how does it work out that the last game we talk about involves? Hey, when I say tall, you say hill. Tall, yeah. tall. Yeah. All right, that's oh, what a live oh, audience is for, brother. Yeah, you can work a room. <laughs> uh, they're gonna get Lipscomb in the first round, and uh, Carolina looking to become. Uh, 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 well, a third straight Final Four third straight. If, they, if they can take And it. I'll tell you what, if, if Joe Barry gets them back to the Final Four, he will be our Christian Leitner in terms of being one of the greatest college basketball players at the university. There's the there's the big board for you, Jed. So take me through it. As you know, Xavier is the is the number one seed. North Carolina, the number two seed. How do you see this playing out? Well, you, we see the heavyweights and we see the guys who get there. But also shout out to teams like North Carolina Central and Texas Southern. Well, Mike Davis has done a great job of getting Texas Southern into that tournament every year, but I still think Houston is a sleeper. Those guys play hard, they play smart, they play together. They are defensive-minded, and they have some great shooters on the perimeter. That's my sleeper team in this bracket. North Carolina going to San Antonio? We'll see you there, brother, with our spurs, brother. <laughs> we'll be right there with our tall boots on. We'll have our boots on. Right, Three gonna, years in a row, Arnie. We are going to head to a break here. Much more to talk about. Much more analysis. Some big name coaches will be joining us for interviews. It's all coming up on the 2018 Selection Show on TBS for the very first time. Thanks for being here. Very musically inclined audience, welcome back to the 2018 NCAA Selection Show here on TBS. Time now to hear from the NCAA Selection Committee Chairman, Bruce Rasmussen of Creighton University. He is with our colleague Adam Zucker up in New York. Adam. All right, Greg, thank you very much. And uh, Bruce did request the U2 introduction music, so you, get, you got your wish there. <laughs> and if anyone thinks that the athletic director from Creighton was given his school any, any preferential treatment, forget it. They, they, you could have, you could have the number one overall seed, Virginia, uh, if you win your first matchup against Kansas State. I know you're looking forward to being athletic director once again, and not just chairman, so thank you for being here. Uh, how close was it between Virginia and Villanova to be the number one overall seed? Well, both had outstanding seasons, and uh, Villanova, uh, Virginia won their regular season. They won 17 games in a, in a very strong ACC. They won their conference tournament. Villanova's an outstanding team, but it was a pretty clear cut between uh, Virginia and Villanova. Now, you had an interesting scenario in that selection room. You had Davidson becoming a bid stealer earlier today. So we knew Davidson would not be in at large. Their win knocked somebody out. So when Davidson cut down the nets as A-10 champs, who was slid out of the at-large pool and uh, out of the tournament? Notre Dame was the team knocked Notre out Dame. by the Davidson win, yes. So you, you thought favorably enough as a committee of Notre Dame because there was so much discussion about how the Fighting Irish season would be analyzed with and without Bonzi Coulson. What were some of the highlights of, of that debate? Well, we had a lot of discussion on a number of teams. Uh, yesterday morning, I think we had 18 teams still under that, under consideration pool, and we knew we were only gonna take four to six. And so we had a lot of discussion about a number of teams. Notre Dame was a unique situation from the standpoint that they had a couple kids that uh, they played without for part of the year. They just didn't have enough on their resume to be in as an at-large. Even with Bonzi. Even with Bonzi. Even with Bonzi. What was the most heated discussion, you would say, in the room or, or the situation that required you to, to move a team's seed or location? Well, the most heated discussion was whether it was pepperoni or, or uh, <laughs> hamburger. But uh, Multiple times. <laughs> no, the, the, we had 
intense discussions about the last four in and the first four out. You know, obviously you're trying to, to uh, get the right teams in and you know that when you put a team in, you're moving somebody out. We had long discussions. I've been on the committee five years. We have never had the length of discussions we had over the last four in and the first four out. And so we showed the first four out a moment ago. We know who the last four in are as an at-large because they're going to Dayton. Who was the last team in? Uh, Syracuse. 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 And uh, a team that lost to St. Bonaventure and lost to Notre Dame. But uh, they are on their way to the NCAA tournament. I know the guys in Atlanta have some questions for you, too. Uh, yeah, Bruce, Seth Davis here. Congratulations on being done. Uh, I feel like we have this conversation every year. Middle Tennessee and St. Mary's, both teams who racked up great uh, records in their conferences, but not amongst the Power Six, Power Seven conferences, what have you. Whereas you have Arizona State and Oklahoma, uh, teams that were under 500 in their own conference making the field. What can you say to teams that are outside this conference? As you well know, coming from Creighton, it wasn't too long ago, they can't schedule the quality games to be able to compete with teams who have uh, multiple quality games on their schedule already baked in. Well, it's, it is a, it's a debate and it's a discussion about the quality of wins and the quality of opportunities compared to the quantity of opportunities. And you're right, Seth, there are teams that have more opportunities. St. Mary's had one win against uh, uh, Gonzaga. It was a great win that St. Mary's had, but they didn't play a very challenging schedule, even non-conference. Uh, they had of their 28 wins, I think uh, all but four we're against teams in the last two quadrants. So we just didn't feel like there was enough of a resume to put uh, St. Mary's in. And we felt the same way. Middle Tennessee's a great team, and they played some good non-conference games. They just didn't win those games. Bruce, it's Greg. Uh, congratulations to you on uh, a job well done, at least it appears on the surface. We hear so much the term parity, and it appears to, to be the rule of thumb for this college basketball tournament as my colleagues are saying most anyone can win it does that make your job tougher as the week winds down i think it was a a, a very difficult process for us and, and I, again i commend my committee members they were passionate they were intense they were intelligent they were committed we spent a lot of time we had a lot of great discussion a lot of time we had a lot of great discussion and we talked about a number of outstanding teams that did not make the tournament we were trying to separate did you play teams that are tournament caliber teams how did you do against them where did you play them and so wins away from home wins uh, games against tournament either teams that were in the tournament or tournament caliber teams those were key separators when you really looked at the teams that are in the teams that are out um, Bruce, I'd like to put Oklahoma under the microscope. I know a lot of discussion was had outside of the committee room. I'm sure there was tons inside, but a 10 seed comfortably in. Talk about why my esteemed colleague to my left here thinks they shouldn't be in, but talk about why the committee chose to put Oklahoma where they did. Well, again, we look at the entire body of work. So we look at all the games. The games in November, December count the same as the games in, in February and March. And Oklahoma had six wins against top 35 RPI. They had some absolutely great wins. We know that they stumbled down the stretch, and that certainly affected their seeding. But they had enough on their resume to get in. Uh, well... They were the number 10 seed. They were 2 and 8. It affected it. it what, were they were number 1 seed before they went 2 and 8? To drop our way down to 10? <laughs> 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 they, were two, they were 2 and 8. You said affect their seeding. So they got in comfortably, but they were 2 and 8. So they, they must have been a really high seed before they dropped our way down to 10. That's my first question. The second question is Arizona State and Syracuse, how did they get in over USC? Okay, uh, to your first question, Oklahoma was a real high seed. Uh, if you look at the first half of their season, they had a lot of quality wins, and, they, and they're playing in an extremely difficult league. And uh, again, while there's no question they stumbled down the stretch, and, it, and they dropped by the week, but they had enough on their resume to be in. Uh, Arizona State, uh, we felt Arizona State had, if you look at their wins, and again, we look at teams in the tournament, we look at the caliber of wins that a team has, and they had a couple outstanding wins early, and they had enough, again, on their resume that the committee felt that they needed to be in. 
All right, Bruce, thank you. Adam Zucker, thank you. And uh, Bruce, congratulations to you and your committee. And we'll look for you in San Antonio. Thanks for joining us. When we come back, thank you. we Very will much. dig deeper into each bracket with our expert analysts. NCAA selection show on TBS. First four through TV Tuesday and Wednesday. There you see it LIU Brooklyn against Radford, St. Bonnie against UCLA, NC Central and Texas Southern, and Arizona State taking on Syracuse. Watch live games on your computer, your phone, your tablet, or your streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. And uh, happy to announce it, it is Pizza Hut time. Now that the madness is here, you can order your pizza at PizzaHut.com. And we want to thank the folks at Pizza Hut. They've been serving our crew, and they, they've brought some pies out here. Are, are, are you going to share any of that Absolutely. action with me right here? <laughs> oh, thank you so much. This is awesome. Uh, log on to PizzaHut.com and order away. Mm. That's good pizza, isn't it, folks? Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> well, a little more enthusiasm. It's good pizza, isn't it? Let's go down to Greg. I'll bring you some pizza. Well, we wouldn't know. I hope it tastes good. Thank mm -hmm. you, EJ. Isn't, isn't bad pizza like an oxymoron? Is, is, <laughs> is, there, is there such thing? Yeah. <laughs> but that's better. Kenny Smith. It could be better pizza. And Seth never Davis. Join me here as we take a longer look at the entire right side of the brackets now. And we will start in the east at the top. Villanova, you always take a look, Seth, at the number one seed and its possible path. To, uh, to a well, there are no easy roads to a Final Four, but when I look at this bracket, I do see, um, you know, very little resistance for Villanova. The one team that does jump out at me, I mentioned, is Texas Tech. Um, they had a terrific season in the uh, Big 12. I think they had the Conference Player of the Year, Keenan Evans. He injured his toe in, early in the second half of a game against Baylor. They end up losing that game to Baylor. He tried to play, played poorly, and then he sat out a game. So they lost a bunch of games, and they were not able uh, to win the conference tournament. We actually talked to his coach, Chris Beard, uh, earlier today, and I think he's getting healthy, and he is a dynamic player. So to me, um, being athletic, of course, they'll be playing in Dallas, so I think uh, that helps their chances of moving on um, through that part of the bracket. But like I said, pretty easy road, I think, for Villanova, relatively uh, speaking. Mm. Well, I, I'd say this, you know, the, the two teams that are ranked at the highest, Virginia and Villanova, they control the game with the pace. And if the pace gets away from you, in a 40-minute game, you could lose. That's the that's the difference where I think where in the past, you, these top two teams, they could play at a, any type of pace. Virginia and Villanova have to play at a certain pace to win, and if the pace gets away from them, we could see upsets. That's where the only difference and, I see. And you know what's fun about that, I, I, Kenny? I'm looking and that's at with Alabama. Alabama. Alabama and no Virginia question. Tech, West Virginia, Murray State, Wichita State, Florida, the 211 seeds, Texas Tech, Arkansas, those are all up-tempo teams. So I think you make a great point. That's why, to me, Villanova uh, is my pick to win the championship because of their guard play. But you like Alabama. They have a pretty well, good no, I like, I like, you know, I like what Avery's done with, with Sexton, you know, a young guy, but he, he's, he's let him go, but at the same time, he's reined him in. He hasn't let him go uh, ridiculously crazy, but he's also knowing that, hey, we're still running our offense. But I'm saying, again, you, if you play at place and all of a sudden you get two or three possessions, the ball runs off your foot, guy it's an incredible three. You're back in the game, and that's what could be scare you. And the other team, you know, honestly, that doesn't get that play at a nice pace is Clemson. You know, they they gone through the ACC. They played, you know, the top teams in the ACC, which I feel is like two, in two leagues. It's not really one. That's why you have nine teams in it. But I think overall, there is no clear cup winner because they have to play a certain way to win. Most teams that are clear-cut winners, they can play any style, anywhere, on Mars, on Jupiter, or in San Antonio, yep. they can beat you. Yep. And this is the difference of why this field of 68 is 68. As we look at the Midwest, Kenny, let me ask you, as a guy who has been there in that tournament, can you entirely trust a team to play the way you think they're going to play simply because of the pressures of the tournament and, and how and how fired up they might be on a particular night? Yeah, you, you can't trust it. But, see, you know, I've been fortunate and blessed, you know, to be on great teams where I didn't care if, you, we were, if you were playing slow, you want to go up and down, let's go. 
We're here. If teams can get you to play at this way they want you to play, you could play around and lose a game that you should win. And there's not a team on this resume that has anything on their resume to say we knock out everyone, uh, with the exception of Virginia. Virginia is the only team that says no. You're going to play a nine-pass possession game against us. No one else has said that throughout this tournament, but maybe a little bit of Villanova have been able to push that. Level. All right, let's talk about this Midwest Regional and uh, the Duke Blue Devils are there, the Michigan State Spartans are there. First of all, people looking forward to Duke against Trey Young in Oklahoma. That's not going to happen. I agree with Chuck about Rhode Island beating Oklahoma. Wow. I think a dangerous team on this board right here is New Mexico State. Now, Kenny re re referenced Clemson. They lost their best big player, Dante Grantham, uh, the last half of the season. He's not going to be back. He's done for the season. New Mexico State, all they've done all season long is win 28-5, 12-2 in the WAC. They have the second best rebounder in the country in Jamario Jones. He's kind of a thinner Charles Barkley in the way he goes and gets it. Uh, great on defense, great in terms of field goal percentage defense, rebound margin, and how about this, guys? That game is in San Diego. So you're talking about uh, playing Clemson in San Diego, and then potentially, is Chuck still here? Did he go home? Is he still here? No, he'll be here. Against Auburn. Well, I'm going to tell They're you what. They're going to beat Auburn what? and New Mexico State's going to the Sweet 16. You better make a call. You better make a call uh, down to Trey Ball down there at Duke because he's going to be playing against Trey Young because I'm going to tell you what. You know, when you you don't have a, a conference that's preparing for what they do at Oklahoma, it's a difference. When those screens come higher than you think they come, watching it on television, Vision and actually being in it and practicing against it for a week is different. So I think that you better get ready down there. Bagley and all those guys, but he's coming to the lane. Trey's coming down there quick, in quick, Oklahoma. Quick long range outlook for Kansas, the number one seed in the Midwest. I like the top half of the bracket. They looking at maybe Michigan State or Duke. By the way, Michigan State is a three seed. They get to go to Detroit and uh, Purdue's going to be there as well. So that's going to be a lot of a lot of Sparty fans there for those first couple of games for the Spartans. All they right, earn guys. it by playing well. All right, the selection show and the analysis rolls on. When we come back, Ernie, Chuck, Clark will dive into the left side of the bracket. See you NCAA CBS and Turner would like to recognize and thank our official NCAA corporate champions and corporate partners for their ongoing support of the NCAA and NCAA student athletes throughout the year. Welcome back to the selection show, everybody. Play the official bracket game of NCAA March Madness, a, a very popular game with the, with the crowd here. It's the Capital One NCAA March Madness Bracket Challenge. It's ready to go, so get your bracket started now at NCAA.com or use the March Madness Live app. All right, back here with uh, Clark Kellogg and Charles Barkley. Before we dive into the left side of the bracket, Chuckster, I, I do have a, a, a little nugget that I shared with the national audi audience <laughs> on, C on CBS earlier today. Um, and, and I thought I would bring it back here if, you, if you'd like. And sure. it concerns your Auburn Tigers. Yes. Ninth appearance in the tournament. Yes. And every year they've been in the tournament, they have won at least one game, except for the one <laughs> year you played in the NCAA tournament. 1984. Chuck Burson shot us. Oh, that's not good. Were you, uh, were you, were you aware of, of this? Uh, I was not aware phenomenon. of it, but I will say this. <laughs> this is the greatest season in Auburn basketball history. They yeah. were picked 11th in the country when the season started. They lose two of their better players who haven't played this year. And for those... <laughs> <laughs> this could have been the reason that the, the 1984 didn't go as planned. <laughs> but The Richmond Spiders got you that year, uh, didn't they? Johnny Newman. Yeah. Uh, NBA they, player? Yes. Yeah, really uh, good player. Uh, this kid named Flynn, I think his name was. But they played, they outplayed us. But Chuck Person shot the ball every time he got it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, Arnie? For what they accomplished this year, this is the greatest season in Auburn basketball history. I'm proud of all those kids and Coach Pearl. Right, really proud of them. Let's uh, let's break down the uh, the left side of the bracket. And if you're at home and you got your brackets and you and you're looking at that that South Regional and that has the number one overall seed in the Cavaliers of Virginia. Now, Clark, look, this has always been a team. Tony Bennett's guys hang their head on defense, but. Does it appear, it appears to me, I hope, I don't know if it does to you, that offensively, 
they can do more than they have in the past. I agree with you. They've been dominant defensively all season long. They've been the most consistently dominant team in college basketball in my mind based on how they play. But offensively, in Hall, in Guy, in Jerome, in DeAndre Hunter, they have guys, even Nigel Johnson comes off the bench, they have guys that can go get baskets if they need to. And I think they might have to in a game, Ernie, outscore somebody and score in, 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 big, in, in big spurts. And um, I like this team. And they're tied together extremely well. And you can never discount those intangible elements when you're talking about trying to make a six-game run. Well, you got to – I take my hat off to Coach Vinegar. To me, he's changed his philosophy. They still play great defense, but now they can actually score. You know, the last few years, my only criticism of Virginia is, like, you can't hold – and if we win six straight games and hold somebody to 60 points, that's not going to happen. And that's why every year they're ranked, they're unbelievable. But you got to be able to score. And Clark's 100% correct. They went out, got some more athletic players on the uh, on the perimeter. This is the best offensive team because Coach Bennett's a great coach. Yes, but Kyle, Kyle Guy can fill it up. Yes, he can. He can go get it. So, too, can um, Jerome and Devin Hall, fifth-year senior, can make it happen. Those guys can... They can get it going offensively a little better than in the past. I know you got your eye on Kentucky, too, in that Well, game. because John Calipari, when I saw that team, I've seen them play probably ten times, and six weeks ago they were awful. And he stayed patient. That team has grown, has matured. They, they obviously win the tournament. But, Ernie, to me, the key to being a great coach is you got your team has got to get better throughout the season. This is not the same Kentucky team they played two months ago or to begin of season. They're playing fantastic right now, and they're going to be a tough out for anybody. Yeah, they really protect the rim. Long, athletic. Um, Gilgis Alexander is terrific. He's a great size as a backcourt player. And when they share it and shoot it, which is what they've done over the last few weeks, they are really scary because they make it tough for you to score in the paint with that size. Arizona, an intriguing team, and, and with what, what guy who could be the best player in the nation? Well, he in DeAndre. Player, I don't even think it's close. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, yeah, mean, I, mean, I think it's player. a pretty he's good the, guy. He is the best player in the country, and I'm gonna do this. Uh, how many years we've been doing this tournament? This is our eighth. This is our eighth. It's our eighth together. Well, this is my eighth year in a row. Arizona's going to the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> I am old for seven. Yeah. But at this, some point, if you uh, keep saying oh, it, it'll uh, happen. Listen, I did. I, I picked them seven straight years to make it to the Final Four. They have not made it. But this kid, Ernie, is the best big man I've seen in a long time. He is fantastic. I'm biased. I live in Arizona, so I get to see him play a lot more. But he is the best player in the country by far, and Arizona is going to the Final Four. And I would interject this. Now, we know there was a cloud around the Arizona basketball right. program when the investigation broke in September. Oftentimes, Ernie, when you have really good talent and coaching, adversity can fortify you. It can really help you. And it seems as though this has really brought this Arizona group together, and they've played as well as anybody in the country the last few weeks. Uh, the number two seed in that uh, in that region is Cincinnati. How deep can the Bearcats go? I have to take a look. <laughs> you were supposed to study that already. Oh, well, it just well, came they've, out. they've switched the West. They I, switched I was, to the West. I was we changed the South as we you changed the West. Yeah. Okay. That's a that's a cue to move to on. A, to, yeah. Okay. Are we moving on? Yeah. We're okay. We're we're moving to the West. Okay. Well, let me say this about this conference. I want to give Mark for you at Gonzaga some, the Zags some credit. Yeah. He yeah. is one of the most underrated coaches. Just because he hasn't won a championship does not mean he is a great, great coach. But also, but listen, Xavier, this might be their year to get to the Final Four. Uh, I, I really like them in this bracket. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go with the, the, the Xavier in this bracket. I like the Tar Heels. I mean, they have, they have... Much like Gonzaga, they have a couple of guys that have played in championship games. Carolina has played in the last two, and Gonzaga has played in last year's. And that blend of talent plus experience, I like the Zags, but I'm looking at North Carolina because of their experience and talent to have a chance to perhaps come out of that. But how, but how about the team on the seven line there, Texas A&M? I, I love the Aggies because they've gone through some adversity too, Ernie. They were really playing at a high level the first two months of the season, ran into some injuries, some players went sideways and were suspended, but they have size. In Tyler Davis and Robert Williams, they have a couple of big guys. And DJ Hogue is a 6'9 guy with tremendous range and playmaking ability. They lost to Wayne Wilson, their outstanding point guard, but the young fella, TJ Stark, has stepped into that point guard role nicely. This is a dangerous team, I think, because I, they've remade themselves a bit, and they've got some ingredients that could be problematic for their opponents. Uh, 
Would, would anybody here in the studio audience love to hear from a coach who's going to you're going to be seeing during the uh, during the madness? Of course you would. How about how there about, you go? There you go. How about if I said that coach was Bill Self of Kansas and the Jayhawks making their 29th straight appearance? That is an NCAA record. And Bill Self joins us live here on the Selection Show. Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. How do you how do you describe how do you assess this bunch of Jayhawks this year? Uh. Well, I, I really like our team right now after this past weekend. Uh, you know, it's been an up and down season. It, it's been an up and down season. We've been uh, really good when we've been good, and we've been very average uh, or worse uh, when we haven't been. But I think we're on an uptick right now, and, and we can stretch it, and we can play around a big guy, of course, when Yudoka's healthy. And I like this team. You know, we've, we've had some good teams going into the tournament, but I think this is one of those good teams. Hey, hey, Bill, give us a sense of how you assess the bracket when it comes out. I mean, you're a coach. You've been here and have had tremendous success, and Kansas is obviously a regular in this event. But how do you assess it when we're presenting the bracket? Well, I, I thought it was a uh, – uh, if you're an automatic bid winner, obviously it was uh, 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 maybe a little anticlimactic seeing the, you know, the, the very first of it. But I thought it was exciting watching how, how you guys unveiled it. And, but, but for me, I, I was just, seriously, I was looking at the, the, the 116 8 9. That was all I was focused mm -hmm. on is that, that first two game tournament that we get a chance to play. And, and uh, of course, we're, we're happy that we get to stay close to home in, in Wichita. And, and if we're successful, you know, we get to stay close to home in Omaha. But that's only if we play great uh, uh, this weekend. Uh, but, but certainly, uh, uh, every game will be competitive. I, 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 I've known Steve a long time at Penn. And, and uh, when he was at Cornell, he gave us all we wanted in our building. I think we won on the last possession uh, one year. And certainly uh, 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 we got to get ready for that one. And then if we're fortunate enough to move, you know, playing, uh, playing NC State or, or Seton Hall, you know, those are that those are both be uh, both both opponents could be coin flip games for us because we just don't have that much margin for error. But we are playing better. We're playing with more confidence. And I like where we're at. Well, Coach, number one, congratulations on another regular season title. I mean, it's amazing what you've accomplished. I hope you're able to get through deep in the tournament because you saw Auburn waiting down there at the bottom late in the tournament. <laughs> um, but uh, being serious for a second, who is the one player? I always, like, I always ask coaches this question. Who is the one player on your team who has to play well for you to advance? Uh, I mean, like, I, I would say like an unsung guy, you know, he, not a he's star. had an unbelievable year this year. He's he's been without question a, uh, an All American, probably a first teamer consensus wise. But but he's the one guy. Even if he's not scoring points, like against West Virginia yesterday, he controlled the game, uh, uh, having 13 assists. But but when he plays well, and 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 he doesn't have to play great, but when he plays well, it seems like he just gives us a confidence that brings out the best in others. Coach, I want to ask a, a question about the uh, coaching technique and how you reach your guys. Uh, because it seems like every year uh, something will come out of your mouth that you're like, whoa, did you hear what Bill Self said about his team? Whether it's like, boy, that was the worst game I've seen since, uh, since Dr. Naismith hung the peach basket. Or you say, boy, that's the softest team I've seen. Does this, does this reach your guys? And, and how do you know what buttons to push? Oh, I don't, I don't know that I ever push the right buttons. Uh, you know, when I said those things, I actually meant it when I said them. I, I, I really felt like that, uh, uh, you know, that that uh, Topeka YMCA, I think that's who we played in our very first game, and that's who I made reference of. Uh, that's how we played uh, uh, one night. But but the, the thing about it is our, our team this year, I, I think I think they deserve the, the, the positive things that comes out of our mouth. But I also think they've deserved maybe the not so positive things because we have played soft at times and we have played without the energy and passion at times. Uh, we lost three games at home this year, which which is uh, uh, the first I think since 1989, something like that. So it's been up and down. But but the way we played the second half of the of the Big 12 season, it's been primarily up. This was a monster league and so many good teams and 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 for these guys to rally around each other and 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 perform the way they did in, in big games. Uh, late in the season. I, th I think we did get tougher as the season went on. A one seed once again, the Kansas Jayhawks under Bill Self. Coach, thanks a lot for taking the time to join us tonight. All right. All right, man. Have a good one. Have a good run. We have more to come here from our Atlanta studio. We are bringing out the whiteboard. This is a large bracket.
And uh, Kenny and Charles will be filling out that bad boy. So uh, now might be a good time to walk the dog. Or you can stick around. We'll be back right after this. to the selection show live from Atlanta, Georgia, here on TBS. Take a time out to play Infinity's round-by-round -round bracket, where each correct pick nicks a donation to coaches versus cancer. Time now for Chuck and Kenny to fill out their bracket. Call the neighbors. Yeah, see, and I wish I could explain exactly how this is going to work, because it's, it's rare, I think, where, where two people combine on a bracket. Because we I, don't agree on most No, I know, but, but we I won't Because I got Lips can beat in Carolina. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. I didn't but, even put but, Auburn in the tournament. So you I, like, but, <laughs> if you feel strongly about that, go yeah, ahead. Don't, I'm a redder than pencil. No, <laughs> no, so, so maybe you can put your great minds together and go through this, and by, by the end of the show, we'll have a completed bracket. And so, then the, each correct round wins money for someone? No, oh. that's something else Greg was oh, Okay, reading. I thought it was, yeah, this was <laughs> yeah, this. Well, this is just the Kenny Charles yeah. board. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know times are tough around here, but y'all could have got us two, two different balls. boards. That's what I was saying. <laughs> I mean, that's we right. could have pitched in. <laughs> right, goodness. I mean, we I'll, get paid I'll like to... the first and the 15th. I could have bought another board. I'll talk to the folks at AT&T. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so I, I'm assuming that some of these are, are given. At least we got two markers. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Oh, y'all got splurged. They you splurged. got the big one, though. They splurged. Well, yeah, that's another story for another day. Do you agree on who you're champion is at, at least i mean could you uh, work no. backwards no no there? we can't work backwards we, no we can't we'd have that. to go this way okay we'll go let's go we, so start, start doing this all right we're, villanova we're, yeah. oh we're yeah. going we'll say villanova, villanova. Yeah, I, would, yeah. I would think that was that was pretty noble see i'm right because would do. he will he will misspell yeah, them, okay. even though they're written up but you got bama virginia tech but you got <laughs> i'm going with alabama i'm going with virginia i'm going tech. with avery i'm going with avery i'm going with buzz sexton no okay so we got a question mark there how's that <laughs> How's that? How's that? Oh, we got, I got Bob Huggins' team. They're terrific. Oh, I'm West going to go West Virginia as well. Okay, okay got, got you. Okay. All right. I'm going with uh, Greg Marshall at uh, Wichita State. Uh, I will go coaches. Wichita State. Well. One of the best coaches. Greg Marshall to beat Marshall. Yes, yeah, Greg Marshall going to beat Marshall. Right. I agree with you. No, wait. You saying that, but you have to get an agreement from me. Okay. So, yes, we believe that. Uh, well, Seth Davis, Seth Davis has said it doesn't even matter who wins between St. Bunny and UCLA, they're going to beat Florida. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to go. And with, I'm going to go with Florida. You know, I want to go with UCLA. I'm going with my man Steve Alford. Okay, okay put another. Holl holiday. Put another Holiday's question having mark. a great year this year. He should be, you yeah. know, possibly. Texas Tech. Yeah. Mm, Texas Tech. I'll go with Texas Tech with you on that okay, one. Okay, you guys can continue <laughs> to do this. I know that this is regarded as compelling television uh, <laughs> to, uh, to all of us who Arkansas. are watching here. I can just imagine what it's but, like if you're Arkansas, at home. Uh, but in the meantime, we do want to we do want to hear from another voice. And let's uh, let's get to Jim Nance right. and Grant Hill and Bill Raftery, Purdue. who spent Purdue. this afternoon calling in the Cincinnati Houston game for their take on Selection Sunday. Ernie, thank you. We're going to rank each of the four regions from the weakest to the toughest. But your first thoughts on when you looked at the brackets, what did you think? I think a couple things. One, how many good teams didn't make the tournament? And then nine ACC teams, and not one of them, just one Virginia Tech in the East? I was very surprised. You know, it's amazing. I don't think they have the respect for this conference. Uh, the <laughs> venues are difficult. You do, certainly. Uh, but not being close to home really shocks me as well. It's, it's amazing. We think in Duke and Carolina, nobody wants to play them, and yet they're a distance from their home base. You would have thought that maybe one of the two would be right behind Villanova as the two seed mm -hmm. in that East bracket. But the highest seeded ACC team in the East, its natural region, is what you mentioned, is an eight seed in Virginia Tech. So here we go. We're going to rank them from what we think is the softest to the hardest. And uh, between the three of us, we believe, we all agree that uh, it's this. But again, nothing against these teams, but just talking about Villanova, Purdue is the two, Texas Tech, Wichita State. That's how we rank the East as the as the weakest of the four. Mm -hmm. And, of course, West Virginia in there, too, as well. So this is, you know, not that anything is easy, but it's always going to be competitive, but I think Villanova does have the easier path. 
Yeah, and I agree. I mean, if he produces a two seed, they have struggled historically in the tournament. Is this their year, Matt Painter, to, to get things together? I also like that 4-5 matchup, Wichita State, West Virginia, potential showdown. But, yeah, Villanova clearly has the easiest path of all the number ones, in our opinion, to get to the Final yeah, Four. Yeah, I think you, you mentioned on something. you got to talk about tournament pedigree, and after you get past, uh, you know, Villanova, you're talking about the Texas Tech doesn't have that history mm -hmm. of making deep runs. Right. And Purdue has struggled, as, as you guys mentioned. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, of course, you got Wichita state which has been twice to the final four 1965 and uh, 2013 all right here's the second if you will the second of the uh, rankings for us as far as the second easiest and, and this is the one that's going to lead to atlanta for the regional virginia and cincinnati we're here where they won the american athletic conference tournament today over houston it's a very good team cincinnati then tennessee and arizona one through four and folks, I don't agree with you two on this one. <laughs> I think Kentucky and Arizona, I think it's a formidable field and uh, a tough one. But, uh, you know, uh, considering what they've accomplished all year, they deserve a little easier run. Yeah, and clearly you and I, we don't always agree. But uh, I do think Arizona, Kentucky, a great matchup, that 4-5 spot. And then how about the defense? Cincinnati, Virginia, a possible regional finals, two of the top defensive teams in all of college basketball. And also they both won their conference tournaments. That would be a, a great game to watch defensively. Let's head west and let's go to Los Angeles. And uh, this is the top four in that bracket. And that's Xavier, the one. Carolina heading out to California. Michigan comes in on a run. Got Zaga, national finalist a year ago, and we have this as the second hardest, if you will. Yeah, Florida, Ohio State, we haven't talked much about them the last couple of weeks, so uh, I think it's going to be a difficult task to get through this. It'll be very, very difficult, and of course, Michigan. We watched them play last Ooh. week, Big Ten tournament. John Beeline has them playing great basketball. It'll be interesting. They had a week extra to prepare. That could be really good mm -hmm. or really bad, but they are tough out as a three seed, the Michigan Wolverines. And maybe a sleeper. Really? True. What do you think of it? A team as good as Michigan. Getting back to that point about uh, tournament pedigree and history, I mean, there's always one bracket to me that just jumps off the screen, and that's the one that's going to be in Omaha for the second week of the tournament. If, it, if the if the seedings hold up, I mean, look at the history with Kansas, Duke, and Michigan State, one through three. Auburn is the four. I, again, comparing that to the East, I mean, these are coaches and programs that have won championships and made many trips to the Final Four, and there they all are in that Midwest bracket. And you left Seton Hall out, too. Very offended <laughs> yeah. in that area. Yeah, consider Duke and, of course, Mike Krzyzewski, Tom Izzo. I mean, just guys who've been down the road and are always ready this time of year. Yeah, get your steakhouses ready there in Omaha. It'll be <laughs> a lot Bring your credit of, card this bring time, Bring your please. credit card. That's the <laughs> toughest conference. You talked about pedigree, but also down, you know, Clemson, TCU, Rhode Island, Danny Hurley, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Hurley potentially in the playing game. So, uh, the that, that conference, by far the Midwest, is the toughest. Sounds like uh, you guys are lobbying to go to Omaha in the second <laughs> week of the tournament. <laughs> You're on a steak diet, huh? Here, so here we go. So uh, that's the way we see it right now. That Midwest bracket is a blockbuster. Ernie, that's the story from here in Orlando. Let's go up the road to Atlanta. Uh, where the drama continues uh, on Selection Sunday. As, as uh, Kenny and Charles have, have completed your... Your first round. Well, yes. we couldn't complete because we have 11 disagreements. <laughs> we have 11 disagreements in round one. It's 11 or seven? 12, round two, rather. Okay, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Alabama. Who you got? Tech. Virginia. So, well, see, so well, I got it Virginia is. Tech. He had Virginia Tech, and I'm not going against Avery and Sexton at all. And um, then our second disagreement is Florida, St. Bonaventure, UCLA. Florida's getting to the second round. See, I believe UCLA is going to beat Bonaventure and they're going to beat Florida. I'm going with UCLA. Okay, Seton Hall, NC State seems to also have a question I'm going mark. with NC State. I'm he went with Seton Hall. Hall. <laughs> I went with the ACC. I went with Clemson, without doubt. Right. Underrated team in the ACC. Yeah. One of my sleepers. And I watched New Mexico State play twice this week. They beat one of my old teammates to get to... Dan Marley with Grand, Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon. Yeah. And I'm they're going to beat Clemson. And he doesn't like Trey Young in Oklahoma. I did not. I do. They, first of all, they should be in the tournament. They're going to show you why they're in the yeah. tournament. Yeah. They're hey. going to show you why they're in the tournament and how difficult it is to guard a guy when you don't get to see him all year. When we come back, we'll get to this side, and, and it'll be even more confusing. Uh, <laughs> We're going to keep going. The 2018 NCAA Selection can. Show continues here on TBS. Jay Wright joins us next. March Madness.
We welcome you back. Follow your teams around the tournament and book your hotel with our friends at Marriott. Just go to NCAA.com slash travel. Brought to you by Marriott. We had a real tough decision to make here. Do we do some more whiteboard stuff with Kenny and Charles, or do we hear from Jay Wright? And Jay Wright won in a landslide. We go back to Greg. I think we've made the right decision, EJ. Uh, back here with Clark and Seth, and joining us now is head coach Jay Wright of the Big East Tournament champion, Villanova Wildcats. Coach, good to see you again. I would assume that you cannot coach in the Big East Tournament and have a weak heart because it just doesn't seem to stand up. That was a heck of a game that you played. That was a great game. Thank you, Greg. It was uh, an electric night in the garden. Great Big East basketball. Providence was tough. Ed Cooley uh, is, is one of the best coaches in the country, man. He had his guys ready. He coached so hard, he ripped his pants. Um, <laughs> and, and both teams played hard, too. Hey, Jay, obviously you guys had a great season. Congratulations. Um, what are you looking Thanks, to see buddy. your team do better? Obviously, I know coaches are typically concerned about something. What would you like to see your team tighten up on as you move forward? You know, we have an interesting team. We have no seniors, and uh, we, we have three fresh, four freshmen, actually, in the, uh, in the rotation. And um, we, we're not as good defensively as we've been. But uh, during the end of the year here, we are starting to get better defensively and in that game against Providence we we couldn't score they couldn't score it was an old school Big E's rock fight um, but we we battled through it getting stops as a matter of fact they had the ball with 30 seconds last possession of the game regulation we got a big time stop and then we got stops in overtime so we got to keep getting better defensively and on the glass uh, Jay congratulations on yet another number one seed uh, obviously things went pretty Thanks, well for y'all two years ago uh, how do you, how would you compare, not necessarily compare this team with the one that won it, but how you feel about this team at this stage heading into the term in terms of your level of confidence that they can win this thing again? A really different, Seth, really different team. Um, like I said, you know, I, this team I feel like, um, you know, all new, new pieces. They, they really haven't done anything together. Um, when, when we won the game against Providence, these guys ran out onto the court, you know, and jumped, jumped all over each other. The last couple years in a Big East tournament, you know, we lost in the final two years ago. Last year we won. Everybody kind of shook hands. I, I feel like there's a sense of excitement, youth on this team. And, uh, and, and, and I have a confidence in them that they, they really enjoy playing together and they're, they're really hungry. Jay, every once in a while, uh, a special player comes along. Would you say that applies for Jalen Brunson and how it is to, uh, to, get, to get a chance to coach him? Yeah, man. I, you know, we, we've had a lot of great players here. We've been, we've been blessed. But uh, Jalen is the easiest guy I've ever had to coach. Uh, he's as complete a player as we've ever had. You know, offensively, he can post up. He shoots threes. He's, we, we joke about the fact that He's the most mature person in the program, including me. He, he, he takes, he's very serious. He's prepared every day. Um, it, it's, it is a true joy to, to coach him. And he's our leader. He's our heart and soul. Mikael Bridges has improved tremendously. What's been the key to his improvement? And I've got another question after you answer that one. You know what, Clark? It's just kind of a, an old school progression of a guy played with as a young guy with guys like Josh Hart, Darren Hilliard, and those guys you should just beat up on him. He's like a little brother, you know, and he, he was smart and humble and he, he learned from them. He would he would battle them. Some days he'd get them, but you know, most days they'd get him. But he kept learning and learning and getting better. And now he feels like, you know, I've I've played against the best. He played on a national championship team and I've learned from the best. So I can, I can play with anybody. He's got a tremendous level of confidence right now and obviously a lot of skill. Jay, you get a lot of kudos, not just for your coaching ability, but how well attired you are on the sidelines. <laughs> how creative would you have been had you split your pants? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, don't, I, I, was, I didn't even know until after the game he did it, but... When I looked at the video and I saw that he thought enough immediately to tuck a Gatorade towel in his <laughs> pants. He, I, 
I, I honestly, you know what? I probably would have been so embarrassed about it. I would have tried to fake it and just keep my legs together and not walk <laughs> with long strides <laughs> and, and, and keep my coattail over top of it. Hey, I've seen your threads. You'd have been very upset if you had ripped your pants. I know that for sure. What a surprise. I Jay Wright. My, my, tailor, my tailor would hear about it. Jay Wright and the Villanova Wildcats ranked up high and threatening for another NCAA tournament championship. Thank you for taking the time, Jay. Good luck to you. We'll see you down the road. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, we have more to come on Selection Sunday, including predictions. But first, we love Intel VR. And you can see <laughs> fans in the audience enjoying it as well. You guys appear to be having fun. Is that fun? <laughs> so much for that. Starting tomorrow, download the March Madness Live VR app powered by Intel <laughs> VR in the Oculus and Google Play Store. Before we go, one last check of the big yeah. board, Ernie. Apparently, this, this VR rendering people speechless. It's, it's an amazing <laughs> phenomenon. Uh, meantime, the, the progress made over here is, yeah. is really Zero. disturbing. No, we have because some. We have I know, but, you, but you've got like nothing here that no, because we got Arizona the appears in the final four. I got Arizona, got Arizona and Villanova in the final four. I had a question right. mark behind the villa, and but I had UNC, Arizona. So what we couldn't figure out how to get there. But we figured that they would get there. All right? We didn't figure out how they're going to get yeah, there. Bill and has got the easiest right? road. But we could not agree, Clark, on too many of these in-between games to get yeah. to there. I would suggest, so I would su suggest trying that in your, uh, in your office pool and see how that goes over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> next time, <laughs> get two chalkboards for Chuck and Kenny. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, when we, when we come back. Mike Krzyzewski joins us on The Selection Show. Oh, wow. We'll be right back. Great. Right. to the NCAA Selection Show. Stay tuned immediately after the Selection Show for the fifth annual iHeartRadio Music Awards on TBS, TNT, and True TV. Let us check in with the show co-host, DJ Khaled. Coming up next, the iHeartRadio Music Awards, hosted by me, DJ Khaled, alongside my girl, Haley Baldwin. And it's live tonight, right after Selection Sunday. We got performances from Eminem, Cardi B, Ed Sheeran, Icon Award winner, Bon Jovi, N-E-R-D, and more. Plus, the world premiere of the Taylor Swift new video. I know you'll be watching that, Ernie. Be ready. Hey, Charles, much love to the Auburn Tigers finally making it back to the big dance. Major hoops alert, cutting it down the nets. The Kansas Jayhawks. Keep it right here, and I'll see you for the iHeartRadio Music Awards. Be ready. <laughs> DJ Khaled knows me. He knows, he knows I'd be glued to the set for, for the uh, iHeartRadio no Awards. He's a guy. great guy. Top off. He's a great guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, uh, Mike Krzyzewski, in his 38th year at Duke, and for the 34th time and 23rd straight year, his Blue Devils are dancing in search of their sixth national championship. Coach K, kind enough to join us here on the Selection Show. Coach, thank you very much for taking the time. We appreciate that. Yeah, it's great being with you guys. Number two seed uh, taking on Iona in the first round. When you when you watch the bracket as it is unfolded, and specifically yours, what are your thoughts when you look at Iona in the first round, then either Rhode Island or Oklahoma in the next game? Well, you know, I only look at Iona, so because uh, you know we've won this thing five times, but we've also been eliminated. Uh, you lose along the way, first, second, third, fourth round, you know, wherever, whatever it is. So, you know, one thing I've learned is just concentrate on Iona. And what I, what I did as soon as the, you know, we were, it was announced was look at my team. You know, we were all together as a group and how happy they are. You know, so it's the 34th time for me, but especially for the freshmen, you know, it's their first time. And so you try to get into their moment and feel what they're feeling at that time. And they were, they were really, really happy and it made me feel good. 
Hey, Coach, how you doing? You know, this is hard for Good. me right now, and I'm just going to let you know, man. You, because m many people don't know this, Coach. When I, was, I visited Duke University, and the, I'm, I'm going to say on national TV why I didn't go to Duke. Because you and Johnny Dawkins beat me in ping pong. I'm like, how can you bring a recruit <laughs> on a trip and beat him in ping pong? It was, uh, you know, that would have been a not bad backcourt. <laughs> we would have won a few games. <laughs> no uh, question. But, <laughs> but, Coach, you know, this is different for you, honestly. Think about it. You know, yeah. you know coaching guys who possibly are there for short periods of time is not something you traditionally have done. And how has your coaching style changed with that mentality of the type of player that has kind of come in and with the sometimes the mentality, and you don't have the t opportunity to coach them up, let's say like you've done Grayson? Well, you know, one, it's, a, it, it's always a, a exciting to coach talent, you know, and when you have exceptional talent, you hope that you get them for more than one year, but to have the ability to coach kids with a you know, high level of talent and that doesn't mean they're great basketball players yet but they how do they use those talents uh, to develop into a basketball player and and also if they're that good they probably have had people trying to complement them yeah you've know, never learned how to complement somebody else on the court and so uh, we try not to give them too much you know, with a three, four year player, you know, when you have guys together like Johnny Dawkins and Amaker and those guys or Hurley and Leitner and Hill, you know, they, they just got, you know, it was easy, you know, when they were juniors and seniors and you could give them a lot and improvise with this group. Uh, you got to be careful not to give them too much. So you take away from their instincts. You know, Coach Grayson is been there a long time what and yeah. he to me he's had some up and down obviously but I, I like him a lot as a player I think people made a lot of that little incident last week it really made me mad I had to make you mad giving this kid a flagrant on a little bump I mean it's, it was crazy I, I was I was frustrated do you get ever get frustrated when people make a mountain out of a molehill uh, it, yes and because uh, you know I've had a really good program for you know, over three decades, I'm used to people making a mountain out of a molehill along the way. And, uh, but that's, that goes with the territory, Charles. And, you know, if you want to you wanna be one of the top teams and want to do it year after year, you know, people look at you closely and uh, hopefully they see great things along with some of the things that you would rather have them not talk about. Coach, in terms of the... Uh of the season with your team. Uh, yeah. Mike Krzyzewski, zone defense. Uh, don't yeah. often, those two don't collide in the same sentence too often, but mm. it's made all the difference in the world for you guys, has it not? Yes, it has. And, you know, I've, uh, I try to adapt, not just with the, the style of play. I do that every year anyway. Uh, and I don't have the same system every year uh, because I have different players each year or guys who are, are, are getting better. And, but I, I've learned a lot about the zone. You know, the 11 years I coached the U.S. team, uh, Jim Beheim was with me. You know, he's one of my great friends. And, and one of his assistants, who's now the head coach at Washington, Mike Hopkins. And we actually taught the zone a little bit to the five U.S. teams that won championships. We only used it once, but we, you know, behind the scenes, you talk about it. You know, you're with coaches and hop. Uh, along with Jeff Capel, my associate head coach, spent a lot of time together you know, talking about how do you teach it, you know, and then, you know, you learn. Those are things that you wouldn't learn if you, you know, USA Basketball gave me an opportunity to learn a lot, mostly from the players I had the privilege of coaching, but also working with you know, Thibodeau and then Tony and, and uh, Nate McMillan and, and Monty Williams. You know, you, you, you get... You, you find out that there are a lot of ways to do something good, and uh, playing zone defense is something that's benefited uh, Jim Beheim his whole career. Yeah, and that's a question I would have you, is how do you get your guys to get that slap-the-ground mentality when they're in a zone and stay aggressive on both ends of the floor? Well, you know, they, they haven't had the right to do that uh, for the first half of the year because we weren't playing very good defense. But... Uh, they, you know, what, what happens for our, with a lot of young guys, it, I, I saw this year that in man-to-man, -man, they, they didn't talk as well. 
you know, again, we're not talking trash talking, but talking with their teammates. They were so, you know, so into, you know, guarding their man. Whereas in zone, when they come back, they're covering an area and a guy's in it or a guy goes in and out of it, they talk better. And you guys know that if uh, whatever defense you're playing, you, you have to communicate so that you can play as one. And we play as one better in, in a man-to-man -man because we communicate better in it. Mike Krzyzewski, so kind of you to join us tonight here on the Selection Thank Show. Thank you very much and have a great run right. here in the tournament. All right. Thanks, guys. The legendary Coach K joining us here on TBS. One segment to go. We'll look at the entire schedule when we come back. Pleasure to bring you the selection show here on TBS for the first time ever. We're running through all of the schedule for these first games when the tournament begins on Tuesday and Wednesday with the first four and then the games on Thursday and Friday. We so appreciate you spending two hours with us. Take a look at the schedule for Kenny the Jet Smith, for Charles Barkley, for Seth Davis, Clark Kellogg, for Greg Gumbel. This is Ernie Johnson. Enjoy the madness, everybody, and good night from Atlanta. <laughs>